Guys, it's getting hot in the office. Hello everyone, so it's time to make bosa. Uh, there's this like viral thing on TikTok. I don't know if it's viral, I've just seen a few people do it. But there's like a boba kit from Trader Joe's. And I love boba, but making boba from scratch is kind of a pain in the butt. So it's like these like kind of instant boba little kit thingies. And supposedly you just add milk. My Halloween costume just got delivered. Is it boba? No, the oh. pumpkin. Oh yeah, oh yay, to here? Yeah. I'm so excited. Excited. So yeah, we're doing a Halloween show in Fresno. So Corey wants to dress like a he's gonna he's gonna wear a costume in the show. So he got his his costume. Get tickets to that in Fresno, October 29th. And also just take all the shows. We're going to New Haven, Boston, San Antonio, Houston, Washington, DC, Atlanta, Anaheim, San Diego, Phoenix. And there's a couple more cities we're adding this year. Get your tickets, Marinescence.com. Let's go eat some boba. Okay, here it is. Wow, you look amazing. Okay. Here's a little boba kit. I've heard about this. It comes with paper straws, which are my arch nemesis. Oh. No one wants a soggy straw in their mouth. Like I might as well use this. There's no difference to me between this and this. Oh, I can already smell it. It smells like fall. <gasps> Whoa, it does. It smells like a fall candle. Corey and I are both gonna have one, so I'm gonna put this in the microwave for 45 seconds. Here's your cup. So first you pour in the booba. Okay, so you take your little boba back, dumping it in. It smells good. Then you put in ice. There she goes. Okay, your turn. Now I guess you stir it up. I think I put in too much milk. I like milk, so I don't care if it's too much milk. Oh. Oh, jeez. Yes, I like it. I like it. I think we, I put in too much milk, but I still like it a lot. I think it's perfect. Mmm. I mm. love this. I do too. Yummy. The bobas are smaller than I'm used to. I'm used to like bigger bobas. Yeah. They feel kind of small, but I'm not mad at it. The flavor is really good. But I think this is a good deal if you like are craving boba, but don't want to like buy a $5 boba or like make it yourself. Because that box is probably like five, $4. Oh, I don't know, but there's five, four in here. I think it's like five bucks or something like that. And there's four bobas in there. So they're like a little over a buck a piece for a delectable drink yes please i approve cheers let's open up some packages shall we <gasps> i bought a dress i saw this dress so okay eric got me this like prairie girl dress and i was like i will never wear that that is so ugly and then i wore it and i really liked it and i think it's actually cute and so i wanted to find another like flowy floral dress because it's very very hot this summer and i found one on amazon i put it in my cart and i was like i'm not gonna buy that and then i think i left it in my cart when i bought other things so i did end up buying it when i didn't intend to but here it is it's a romper actually so it's a poofy sleeved green floral romper i hope it's cute <gasps> okay this this is for Maisie. Maisie, for some reason, when she takes baths, they have all these bath toys. And Maisie picks up, we have a rubber ducky that's a bath thermometer and it tells you the temperature of the bath so that we make sure it's never too hot for the babies. And that's the only thing she wants to play with. She loves to pick up the bath thermometer duck and just look at the eyeballs of the duck and she talks to the duck. And Wesley and Flynn will play with all the toys, but Maisie only wants a duck. So I got her a big duck with little baby duckies and they squeak. So she'll have this for bath time tonight. I'm so excited. I do not remember buying clothes, but I think I put clothes in my cart one night and then I just forgot to take them out. This is just a romper, it looks like. Just a plain black romper with pockets. And I got a little vacuum for our office. Ta -da! Very fun stuff, riveting information. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go eat my boba, bye. Hi guys, um, it's the next day. I know I look a little scary. I just took a shower. I did not wash my hair because it's just too much of a pain in the ass to do my hair every day. So I didn't wash it. So it's just gonna be a greasy day. Um, but I was gonna try on that dress that I got, or romper, I guess, and see how it looks. And I was like, oh, I need to film this. So you guys can see. I'm gonna put it on really fast and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. What do you think? I feel like a doll. My boobs, we need to talk about my boobs, guys. That's for another time, but. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I look like an American girl doll or something. <laughs> it looks too young for me. I'm like an old mom now, so I don't care. It's hot and not like sexy hot. I mean, it's hot in temperature outside. And I don't want to wear heavy clothes. I want to wear something light and flowy. So here's this. Now, um, maybe I'll try the other romper. Okay, 
this is what me. This is something I would wear like every day of my life. Um, just like a sack. <laughs> This is more my vibe, but I still think I'll try out the other dress today, even though this is more me. Maybe I'll wear this tomorrow. This is so comfortable. I feel like I'm not even wearing anything. Like wearing a bed sheet, a pillowcase. Oh, so comfortable. But what do you guys look better on me? I think this is more me. This is more my age, I feel, maybe. But then one's cute and fun, and who cares? So it's not going anywhere today. You guys are the only ones seeing me, so who cares? Okay, there's one huge flaw with this outfit, and it's the fact that it has no pockets. I'm very against wearing any clothes that don't have pockets. Like, that is a big, big no-no for me. Like, I won't buy anything that doesn't have pockets. So this is a big deal for me to wear this because I don't have a purse. I don't like, I mean, I have purses, but I don't use purses. I don't like purses. So I like to carry everything in my pocket. So if it doesn't have a pocket, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take my medicine and go be with my kids, bye. <laughs> I was trying to let you see Wesley laughing, but Maisie wanted to be the center of attention. Didn't you, Maisie? Hi everyone, it's the next day. I made eggs for me and the babies to share. I have a question. Can you help me understand just regular pans like this that are like this stainless steel? Because every time I cook anything in them, everything sticks. And I don't want to use like the non-stick, the like Teflon or whatever kind of pans, which are the other kind of pans here. Like I've heard they cause cancer. I don't want to use those, but these everything sticks to, and I don't have my, all my pans are still at my house in LA. So how do I cook things in this without it sticking? Someone help me, because I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So thank you. But yeah, I'm making eggs for the babies and I'm actually going home today to my LA home to get ready for, I have a photo shoot tomorrow for my new merch that's coming out very soon. So that's exciting. So today I'm just packing up and going there for the night and I'm bringing back the pussycats. So we'll see. I don't know where Eric and Flynn are. The babies took a nap. I put them down for a nap and when they woke up from nap, I couldn't find Eric and Flynn. I think they probably went to the beach. That seems to be like the thing. If someone's missing, they're probably at the beach. So we're just gonna eat some eggs here and have a nice little Sunday brunch. How's that sound, kids? If you hear that noise, Wesley is, that's how he eats. When he eats, he moans. The whole time he's eating, he's like, oh. Like he loves, he loves eating. All right, Wesley loved the eggs. I got a few packages. Speaking of my lip stain saga, I did find that one from Rimmel that like kind of works. It's not like the best, but it works just better than the other ones I've used in the past. But this one, my sister-in-law Jessica swears by this. She's like, it's the only thing that works. It's the best thing in the world. It never comes off your lips. It's like a tattoo. So I got it. It is called Lip Sense. So I'm gonna try this. Ooh, a fun little tunnel for the kitty cat. This is for the cat. This is for the cat. This is for the cat. Howdy y'all, hanging out outside, it's so nice. Um, Flynn's got a new guitar and I wrote a song, he won't let me play it for him. It's about you. Maybe he'll let me play it for him at some point on his new guitar. Look at his new guitar, guys. What's on it? A ladybug. A ladybug, isn't that so cool? He picked it out himself. He was playing my ukulele so much yesterday. I'm actually gonna put in some clips of it because it was amazing. He sang like a million songs and he did it for like an hour. So I'll put that footage in here. <laughs> Certainly, I loved it, so we went down the slide, and then I started to make it up, that there's flowers here at my house. See? Beautiful. That was a funny one. What's a funny one? Mommy and no. Daddy are super funny to make me laugh. Super funny, a laughing flower. Oh, that's a laughing flower. <laughs> Silly song. Is that super funny? Very funny. I loved it. I have more. You do? Which one do you want about bubbles? I like songs about bubbles. And then the lamp. 
and then a flower, and then a jar with a bug. <laughs> that is a funny song, Gwen. Scary monsters, but I don't like scary monsters. I like scary monsters because they don't bite, but I don't scare me. Uh, scary monsters don't bite me because they bite anyone like me. One time there was a monster picking me up, and I didn't like it when a poster did it. I liked it when a poster did it. Like it's a man. Wait, when did a monster pick you up? No. You said one time a monster picked you up? Did it or no? When did that happen? I don't know. One time there was a baby. It looked like a bug, but it was a baby. But a baby grabbed a bug. Uh, it looked like a bug. Big pukies! <laughs> did she pukey? <laughs> did you have a pukey? <laughs> Maisie grabs babies, but especially not babies. But Leslie picks up toys and put it in his mouth like baby toys. But they don't like baby toys, so they like putting different toys in their mouth. <laughs> so maybe pick some things, like different things, like not baby toys, and put her in his mouth, and then it does, and, and then it does it to her, and then she does it, and then daddy does it to her, and give a cheerio to Maisie, and when cheerio, Wesley, so he beats happy like a baby. Sometimes babies cry, sometimes we cry. Sometimes when they get bonk a bonks, sometimes when they fall down, but I be brave when, when I break down. Breathe like out of my mouth, like just flown like out of your nose. I like breathing out of my mouth or my nose like a baby like with nose and with with leaves like blows out his mouth with water with no water but especially air with like this and he doesn't like all by himself so he doesn't like him so he doesn't so grown us do it too Especially not teaching him because he does it all by himself. Oh yeah, there's a picture of people's but I don't like them because I don't like them. So I do like them but I don't like them because they are scary. So I don't like people and say hi to them. So I don't like this is saying the morning is much better. Your audience yeah. loves it. So he's an incredible song artist. He's an incredible musician. So I was like, you know what? Maybe he should have his own little ukulele. So we got him his own little ukulele. Isn't that so cute? I'm a little lizard. This adorable baby. Maisie, you're always giving a judgy face, but you're very cute. Hi, where are you going? Where are you going? Did you see the camera and get excited? <laughs> you're such a nut. Well, I'm home and it is weird to be home, guys. It's really weird because I've only not been here for two weeks, but it feels like I haven't been here for months. So when I walked in, I was like, it felt like I was like coming back to a home I haven't lived in in years and like reminiscing of the olden days. Like it felt so weird walking into the house. I think I have chocolate on my face. 
anyway, so it was really weird, but it was good to see the cats. Daisy was very excited to see me. Gus, I think, was excited, but was trying to pretend like he wasn't excited, but I feel like he was excited. I was so excited to see them. I've really missed my cats so freaking much. So um, yeah, it was really good to see the kitty cats. I've kicked my friends out of my place that have been living here so that I could have a night alone with my pussy cats. And I'm getting my hair and makeup done tomorrow. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. I'm getting my hair and makeup done. I'm doing a photo shoot, gathering belongings, and tidying up the place and then heading back to the new house and I'll be there for a day and a half before I leave for New Haven, Connecticut and Boston, which is where my shows are this week. So if you don't have tickets, make sure to get tickets. And Eric's coming with us this week, which is exciting because he's actually from Connecticut. So yeah, I'm excited to see his family and friends. But I'm really, really, really sad to leave my kids. It always is hard and painful. It does not get easier. In fact, it gets harder every time I leave them. You would think I would like get used to it or like, it would become more normal. Like it's just like how it is because I tour, but like it literally gets more painful, like more gut-wrenching every time I have to leave them. I hate it so much. Like I'm already upset about the thought that in a few days I'm gonna have to leave them. Like today I went up to Eric and I just gave him a big hug and I was like, I'm so sad that I have to leave the kids this week. It's getting harder and harder and harder, especially as the twins are getting older and like getting more and more of a personality. And I don't know, It's it's been really hard. And I'm curious, I have a question for um, Nikki mamas out there, or just mamas in general. I guess this doesn't apply only to Nikki moms, but um, this could apply to any moms out there. And this is a hard thing for me to like talk about at all, but I feel like maybe there's other moms out there who've experienced this and I wanna talk about it. With Flynn, right when I had Flynn, he was immediately like came out of my body and was immediately put on my chest and we had this wonderful bonding moment together immediately and he immediately nursed and we snuggled. Literally the moment he came out of my body until like now, he still cuddles on my chest and he's three and a half years old. So that is something that like, I just instantly felt really bonded to him and he felt instantly really bonded to me. And he's always been very cuddly, very needy with me. He's such a mama's boy since birth. The twins, I obviously felt an instant bond with them when they were born. However, it was a completely polar opposite experience where I didn't push them out of my body. They were cut out of my body. I didn't feel it. I didn't see it. I just felt like a biology experiment lying on a cold table as people cut my babies out of my body. And that was a very hard experience for me having gone through a birth where I pushed out my child and then having them, the twins cut out. Every woman's experience is different. Some women live for C-sections. They're like, yes, schedule a C-section. I don't wanna push it out. Like get it out of me and just cut it out. Some women like that. Some women prefer a C-section to vaginal birth. And I just happened to be lucky enough to have a pretty positive, good hospital vaginal birth experience. And so I really liked it. Anyway, I'm getting a little off topic. <sighs> Point is, because my babies were cut out of me like that, and I will cry about every time I talk about it, probably until the babies, like they're gonna be married with their own kids and I will cry talking about this. But like the fact that they came out and were not immediately put on my chest, I didn't get to hold them. You know, I'm not here to cry. This is not why I'm talking about this, but it makes me cry every time I think about it, how like the twins were born and I didn't get to hold them and bond with them the second they came out. So they came out of their mommy's body and were taken away from mommy. And that was, ew, I, I hate that I'm saying mommy, like it's literally me. They were taken out of my body and taken away from me because that's what needed to happen. Of course, it's what needed to happen. That's what they needed to have happen to survive. So I'm very grateful that that happened because they needed that to live. But selfishly, I'm sad that I didn't get to have that like bonding experience with them. But obviously I wouldn't have it any other way. I want them to be safe and live, obviously. But still, I'm sad that I didn't get that moment. The point is, after that happened, um, like I said, Flynn literally has been on my chest and been a part of me and cuddly and uh, mama's boy since he literally came out of me. Whereas the twins immediately went to the NICU and lived there for many, many, many weeks. And so that meant that I only got to hold them and cuddle them for a certain amount of time every day. And I really felt like while they were in the NICU, I had to ask permission to hold my children. And I had to like, you know, work around the schedule that the, you know, experts, the nurses and doctors needed to keep the babies on because they were doing what was best for the babies. But it was very, it was just a very different experience than what I had experienced with, with Flynn. And so I felt like I didn't get to have like a true deep like bonding experience. Of course I had a bonding experience with Wesley Maisie, but it wasn't what I had pictured. It wasn't what I had hoped for, obviously. It was much different than what I had dreamed of when I found out I was pregnant with twins. Wesley and Maisie have always loved me and I've always been obsessed with them. I just feel like with Flynn, it was an instant, like I'm obsessed with my mother. I need her 24 seven. And with Maisie and Wesley, it was like, oh, I love this woman who grew me and I, I love 
my mom. But it wasn't like this obsessed, like I have to be with you 24 seven. It was just like, oh, I really loved my mom and you're great. But it didn't feel the same like deep mama's boy that I had with Flynn. And that was really hard for me too, that it wasn't the, that wasn't the same. And I wasn't trying to compare Wesley and Maisie to Flynn at all, but it was just my experience with Flynn was the only one that I knew. And so because that was my only human experience having a child, I just assumed that that's how it would be with my other kids and it wasn't. And so something that's really cool about Wesley and Maisie is that that bond has like, it just continues to grow. And of course it always continued to grow with Flynn too. Am I making any sense? I, I don't know. I feel like I'm not making sense, but with Wesley and Maisie, I feel like I'm really experiencing and seeing our bond and connection and obsession with each other grow as they get older. Whereas with Flynn, it was like, and that's not to say that I didn't have an obsession and bond with them when they were born. I did. It was just such a different experience than with Flynn where it just felt so extreme and so intense with Flynn. And with Wesley and Maisie, it's been like a gradual growth. I think a big part of what I'm trying to explain is because of the NICU experience, I felt like with Flynn, when he was born, I was his lifeline. He was breastfeeding from me and I took care of him. We were in the hospital together for a few days after he was born. He came home and it was, it was me. I was his life support. I was his everything. I was what was keeping him alive. So he completely relied on me 100% because of that. With Wes and Mays, during the first month and a half of their life, they relied on lots of incredible, talented, genius, amazing, life-saving nurses who I owe my life to, who I think are just the most incredible human beings on this planet because they kept my babies alive. The nurses and doctors at the NICU. So their lifeline was those incredible doctors and me because I was pumping, but they weren't eating from my body directly. They were, it was being pumped and then fed to them from a bottle or through a tube from lots of different people. And even when they came home, it was, they were fed with bottles by um, my parents or from Eric or from Corey or from me, or, you know, I do feel like it was usually me because I wanted that experience, but it was just a much different experience of like, I was not their only source of survival. There was, it was a team of people. So I think that's part of what made me feel like it wasn't as strong of like that intense bond as I had had with Flynn because I was Flynn's survival. Like I, it was all on me. And with Wes and Maze, it was like, it took a village to like um, help them to survive, which is awesome and I'm so grateful for. But it just meant that it was a very different experience. So, oh my God, this is so long winded. I'm sorry, I'm getting to the point right now. So my point is <laughs> that it feels like Wesley and Maisie are really now extremely obsessed with me. <laughs> And I, them, I've always been obsessed with them, but it feels like now they're at a point with me that Flynn was at like from birth where like they've always loved me and they've always known I am their mom. But now it's like, if I walk in a room and they see me and I walk away, they are furious. <laughs> they're like, how could you not hold me every second of the day? Like they just like want me to hold them, want me to talk to them, want me to play with them, want me to sing to them. Like they just need me with them all of the time. And I love it. I love that, even though it's impossible and very overwhelming to have three kids who all feel that way. That's how, oh, what I've always wanted. I love that. And um, what I'm trying to say is that it makes it a lot harder for me to leave them because in the past, when I've left them for tours and stuff, I knew they needed me. I knew they loved me. I knew they missed me um, when I left, but I also knew that they were like, oh, but daddy's here and daddy takes does the same things. He has bottles and he does it. Or grandma's here or grandpa's here. There's all these people that took care of them. So they missed me, but they, I, they were kind of fine because they like loved all the other people who always took care of them alongside mommy. So, you know, I did it again, I apologize. But now I feel like they're like, where's mom? Like, hello, you guys are not mom. I only want her. Now it feels, every time I leave and they, as they get older, it gets harder and harder and harder. And with Flynn too, because you know, as a baby I knew Flynn was very connected to me. So when I would tour, it was very hard to leave him. But now he literally is like, mommy, I will miss you. And I'm like, ugh, it's like so hard. And it's so, so hard, but it's also so important for me, I feel, to do what I love and it makes me feel like me and the things I'm passionate about. One, for me and my mental health, but also a huge reason is to show my kids that I want them to do whatever they love and what makes them happy and what they're passionate about and that they can do it and they can do whatever they set their mind to. And if I can do it, they can do it. Like, that's really important to me. But that was a very long-winded way of saying that, like, it gets harder and harder every single time I leave my kids and um, I'm having a hard time. Wow. It's 
took me 15 minutes to say that, but that's what I was trying to say. Okay, I love you guys. Leave Tortilla Talk questions for tomorrow. I don't know how much I'll be able to vlog because I'll be in the middle of a very busy photo shoot all day tomorrow. So leave um, questions for Tortilla Talk because that's probably what most of tomorrow's video will be. I love you so much and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.